this uh, parallel session is the first uh, of the Turin Islamic uh, Economic Forum and the uh, European Journal of Islamic Finance uh, Workshop. Um, here we have uh, uh, in front of us two um, initial presentations by uh, Muhammad Duku, uh, paper 1.2, an exploration of the role of Zakat as a robust mechanism for economic growth and development in uh, Nigeria. A case study of the Cow Emirate Council of the Old State, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that's the first presentation. Then we have uh, the paper 1.3 uh, by Zaidi Nora. Mm -hmm. uh, Zaidi is also visiting a PhD candidate at the University of Turin, Department of Management. So mm -hmm. uh, the second presentation uh, uh, is about SIF executive officers, characteristics, and bank performance, a comparative study of Islamic and conventional banks in Tunisia. Uh, so I will leave the floor, the virtual floor, first to Mohamed Duku for uh, his presentation. So Mohamed, uh, that's your turn. Please feel free to share your slides and uh, uh, present everything. You have uh, almost 15 minutes to uh, complete your presentation and then obviously uh, Zaidi and me or the other uh, auditors of this uh, uh, parallel session may obviously ask you some questions and uh, debate about uh, your, uh, your paper. Thank you. Okay, good morning all. Good morning. My name is Muhammad Duku. I'm presenting a paper titled uh, uh, An Exploration, The Role of the Car as a Robust Mechanism for uh, Economic Growth and Development in Nigeria against the Optical MRA Council. Islam being a unique by virtue of its principles of total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses on both material and spiritual aspect of life. Therefore, Zakka is one among the important filler and instrument of Islamic fiscal policy, which can be considered as a as an important tool which every state or nation used to achieve its stated economic objectives and achieve welfare through effective and efficient allocation of resources, equitable distribution of wealth, economic stability, full employment and eradication of unemployment and poverty. So also the car is the third filler of Islam, is the third filler of Islam that combines the aspect of worship and mu'amala. The man and connect between the rich and the poor in the distribution of wealth. In order to address the problem of poverty and economic shortcomings, Islam places socioeconomic mechanism to which helps in promoting equitable distribution of wealth, realization and promotion the objectives of uh Makasid and Sharia. So Islam encourages righteousness in the glorious Quran and the tradition of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is by giving obligatory and voluntary charity such as Zakah, Zakatul Fitr, Sadaqa, Awqaf, Wasiya, Qarhad, Qarhad, Hassan and Hiba, among others. So Open this zakah is seen as an annual distribution of wealth in cash or in kind from the rich to the poor or needy as ordained in, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakah is given or expended in the same area from which it is collected. The surplus after its distribution to the deserved people is to be transferred to the expenditure in other areas. In lieu of this, it is the responsibility of Islamic state or government to take effective measure in collecting and distributing of zakah funds to the area of need. Consequently, zakah can be viewed as an essential building block of Muslim societies 
an, an institution tied to the fiscal policies. And it, it plays a significant role in removing hardship and inequality in Muslim societies. Thus, zakah is seen as a wealth distribution instrument that can reduce the poverty rate when the fund collected by the zakah institution can be distributed to the beneficiary that is as enough, efficiently, and effectively. In Nigeria, despite the numerous uh, uh, strategies deployed by the uh, government in solving the problem or tackling the problem of poverty and unemployment, but still those problems remain in the country. This indicates that government wealthy people, well-to-do people are not effectively and efficiently discharging their responsibility and government are not ensuring that equity is prevailing through enforcing and collection of uh, collection and distribution of zakah. So also Yobi state in Nigeria is a state with a higher rate of or higher number of Muslim population and it's a state that is detrimentally affected by high rate of poverty, illiteracy, unemployment, and is a state which affected by Boko Haram insurgency. For us, uh, as a result of this insurgency, there is high rate of unemployment in the area. Also, the, uh, as a result of this uh, Boko Haram insurgencies, People were killed, properties were destroyed, people become homeless, poverty is prevalent, children are windows begging, begging on the street, no affordable water to drink, no food, no quality education, no health care facilities to the uh, and many other factors. So also to link it together, the Emirate Council is one among the Emirate Council in, in the states with a population of about 87,823, according to 2006 census. For the total land of, uh, area of 980 square kilometers, square kilometers. The climate of the Emirate is dry and hot for the greater part of the year. And the area is endowed with abundant mineral resources such as potash, uh, gizems, uh, among others uh, resources. The people of Tiko Emirate mostly uh, are currently by tribe and they engage in farming activities almost throughout the year as their means of earning. The history of Zakat can be traced back to the coming of Islam to the Emirate through Kanembrunner Empire, when the region has an organized political system which has governed bears on the Islamic system. Thus, the institution of Zakat existed in the area which is known today as the Emirate long before the colonialism through the record of Zakat administration and distribution are not fully archived. Subsequently, with the coming of colonial masters, different taxes, Haraji and Jangeli, in house name, were introduced to fund colonial administration. This brought to a sort of multiple uh, taxation and confusion within the context of traditional entities that are responsible for collecting such taxes. And this made it difficult to distinguish between the car and colonial taxes collected in the Emirates. Since then, people started to distribute their the car directly to the beneficiaries. Attached to this, now Tiko Emirates, the uh, car and workup committee came into being in two, 2002 as a result of executive directive by the executive governor of the United States, Alaji Bukhar Abba Ibrahim, FNIQS, who directed all the 14 Emirate Council in the state to establish a committee of Zakat and work of in their various domains. 
Therefore, due to the economic shutdown in the state because of insurgency, there is high rate of poverty, unemployment, non provision of social services such as poor education system, uh, absence of potable water and healthcare facilities, among others, are what detrimentally affect the life and well being of people in the state. Moreover, it is objectives of this paper to explore and analyze the role of Zaka as an instrument for economic growth and development in Tiko Emerald Council. The concept of Zaka. Zaka is one among the five pillars of Islam and a compulsory Sadaka, which is which is the rich pay to the Islamic State in order to help and create stable Muslim society. The term Zakka is derived from Arabic root word meaning to increase, to fulfill, to bless. But in Islamic connotation, it means to fulfill one's possession of wealth by distributing prescribed amount in force on the rich, which has to be given to the poor as their right as an essential mode of ibadah. It is also an obligatory portion from a person, uh, person wealth and property to be spent on the poor, needy, and whose who are eligible to collect. The rulings of zakah. Zakah is obliged over every Muslim, male or female, who possesses a minimal amount of wealth. This is established in the glorious Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, take from your wealth sadaka in order to purify and sanctify them with it. In another verse, the Almighty Allah say, O oh, you who believe, spend the good things which you have legally and and of what which you have produced from the earth for you. And also the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who say and establish a prayer, salat, and pay the obligatory charity, zakah. The rule of zakah also established in the sunnah or tradition of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the state in his, by his statement that Islam is built upon five pillars, justified that there is no God but Allah, and Muhammad uh, is the messenger of Allah to, to establish prayer, pay the obligatory charity, that is zakah, uh, full give to the house, Kaaba, and Pastor, the months of Ramadan. This is narrated by Bukhari and Muslims. Ibn Abbas reported that when the Prophet peace be over him, son Mu'ad bin Jamal to Yemen, as a governor, he said to him, Verily, you are going to the people who are people of scripture. So invite them to the testimony that there is no worthy of worship but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. If they obey in that, inform them that Allah, the Almighty, the Majesty, has obliged them to pray five prayers in Mamad, we we cannot hear you, and uh, I think that uh, uh, we can uh, also sum up your presentation because uh, uh, actually, obviously, you send us the paper, and we uh, we obviously read the paper on uh, ourselves and also the authors uh, who are in this uh, session with the paper. So uh, the main. Uh, uh, element is to summarize the paper, okay, for your colleagues. Uh, so I I would like to to ask, uh, for instance, uh, to Saidi if you have any uh, considerations, or also Azaz, I I can see you Azaz connecting. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, considering the Italian time, good morning. I think. Uh, we would have also evening or night, depending your on your hour. Uh, so, that you have any consideration about this? Uh, no, because um, really I didn't understand some points by but uh, 
the problem is that I can't hear clearly the words. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't have no remarks. Okay, okay. So I think that um, Azaz, are you with us? Okay. So I think that uh, uh, Mohamed will stop uh, the presentation. Um, <coughs> so Zaidi, you can start uh, presenting your paper. I know that you have a presentation, so uh, okay. the virtual floor is uh, for you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, good morning again. My name is Deidi Nora. I'm a PhD student at the University of Sfax, Tunisia. Uh, I'm pleased to be here today in the Turin Islamic Economic Forum. And I want to extend my gratitude to you, Professor David Calandra, for this invitation. I'm not sure if you hear me or no. Yes, yes, we can hear. Thank you so much. You okay. can also see your slides. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. I want to thank you for this uh, occasion. I appreciate that. And I'm uh, pleased to, uh, I'm excited to share insights from my research titled Chief Executive Officers Characteristics and Bank Performance, a comparative study of Islamic and conventional banks in Tunisia. I choose to start my presentation with this Quranic verse because it uh, underscores the foundational principles of Islamic banking, um, which operates in the prohibition of interest and the promotion of ethical financial uh, practices. The introduction. Islamic banks driven by principles of human welfare and inclusive growth are emerging nowadays as a compelling alternative to conventional banking. Uh, this study addresses the limited attention given to CEOs in the banking sector in general and in the Islamic banking sector particularly. Uh, their pivotal role in economic development will be emphasized in this work. Uh, the CEO characteristics, uh, particularly their educational background, are explored for their influence on decision making and bank performance. Our methodology delves into trends in customer satisfaction, examines the influence. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> influence. Hello, Zaidi. Sorry. Uh -huh. We can only see your uh, slide number one. So I don't know why. I think that you turn. Uh... The yeah. slide two, I think, I suppose. Uh, now I'm in slide three. You can see oh. the... Yeah, we, we only see slide number one. Oh, my God. And if uh, I did like this? Okay, now yes. Okay. Now we are in slide uh, four. Yeah, okay. thank you. Now I'm in the introduction. <clears throat> Uh, the methodology delves into trends in customer satisfaction and examines the influence of CEO educational background and assesses the impact of the delegation of the decision-making authority on bank performance. This study contributes to the upper echelon theory, emphasizing the importance of CEO backgrounds and expands the understanding of decision-making authority's role in bank performance. Uh, according to the upper echelon theory, the CEO's bounded rationality, which is a concept from behavioral economics, which means that individuals make decisions within the limits of their cognitive abilities and the information available. The bounded rationality combined with educational and professional backgrounds of CEOs affect their managerial decision making which in turn affect the global organizational actions and performance. However, <clears throat> according to the new institutional theory, the organizational performance is a result of external factors like environmental influences and regulatory framework. <clears throat> now I will present for you the Tunisian banking system, which is composed of 87% of conventional banks and 13% of Islamic banks. However, Islamic banks uh, represent a smaller portion from the total number of banks. It uh, 
he successfully attracted 25% of customers. In comparison, uh, conventional banks have a larger customer base with um, 75 percent of customers uh, opting for their services. Despite this, 75 uh, percent, no, customers, uh, Islamic banks have a higher customer satisfaction rate uh, of um, 75 percent, whereas uh, conventional banks report a lower satisfaction rate of only 45 percent, which explain uh, which suggests uh, uh, clear preferences for the customers, uh, for the services offered by, uh, by a financial banking system in Tunisia. Uh, the methodology, this study based on a sample of 1,380 banking professional, uh, professionals englobed all the CEOs of the Tunisian bank system. Uh, the period is from 2018 and uh, 2022. Uh, the data were collected using a research questionnaire from the annual reports of banks, the central bank records, and CEOs' personal characteristics are collected from uh, their profile on social networks and by uh, uh, direct meetings with them and from online articles. The independent variables are CEO educational background, uh, his uh, educational level, gender, tenure, age, uh, delegation of decision making authority, and bank size. Uh, the main dependent variable, variable is the bank performance as measured by return on equity. We use the a five year average return on equity to uh, mitigate short term influences. Uh, the methodology starts uh, to uh, test the validation, the validity of our questionnaire, then the regression analysis. Uh, here is the first model. Uh, the title is the, this model is uh, to examine the relationship between CEOs, educational background and bank performance by comparing conventional and Islamic banks. The results of uh, conventional banks show that uh, CEOs' educational background, both field and level, positively affects bank performance. As we can see here, the uh, CEOs with financial and engineering background positively affects the bank performance. Uh, also, CEO, um, CEOs um, with postgraduate uh, degree influence uh, positively the uh, bank performance, uh, emphasizing the significance of the education level. Uh, conversely, CEOs with economics-related degree have a negative impact. Uh, in contrast, the results of the Islamic banking shows that the finance-related degree have a significant positive uh, impact and he is higher than in conventional banks. However, there is a little evidence to uh, support the positive impact of management-related degree, and there is no evidence, is, uh, there is no significant impact found for uh, engineering background. Also, the educational level still have a positive and significant impact on bank performance. Uh, these uh, findings uh, offer nuanced insights into the distinct dynamics of CEO education in conventional and Islamic banks, emphasizing the need for tailored strategies based on the nature of the banking institution. The analysis confirms the relevance of the upper echelon theory underlining the crucial role of CEO characteristics in shaping bank performance. In uh, our model number two, we will test, um, sorry, <clears throat> the model number two will test the relationship between the decentralization of decision-making authority and bank performance. Uh, the results of conventional banks show that uh, the decentralization of decision-making authority positively influenced the uh, conventional bank performance. Uh, um, as we can see, a positive uh, coefficient of the delegation of decision-making authority. 
Also, larger banks uh, denoted by uh, an increasing number of branches also uh, demonstrate uh, higher performance. Uh, furthermore, uh, banks led by CEOs um, with a dual role, dual role means is he is the CEO and the chairman of the board of directors in the same time, also show, uh, show a positive uh, impact on uh, financial outcomes. Uh, however, uh, for the Islamic banks, so the delegation of decision-making authority have a positive uh, and a significant impact. Uh, the uh, bank size, uh, as measured by the number of branches, have a higher significant impact, but there is no evidence that CEOs with uh, dual roles have any significant impact. Uh, to conclude, we can uh, see our main results uh, is that the customer satisfaction rate is really higher in uh, Islamic banks uh, compared to uh, uh, conventional ones. Also, the educational background of CEOs ha have a substantial and distinctive impact on bank performance with noticeable variation between Islamic and conventional banks. Also, decision-making authority has different effect of on bank performance, highlighting nuanced sector dynamics. The key implication is the uh, because the upper echelon theories state that uh, the um, the the organization performance is a result of uh, CEO's characteristics, and we confirm this uh, this principle by. Uh, proving that CEO's uh, educational background and the degree of delegation of decision-making authority really matter for uh, bank performance. Also, this work challenges uh, 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 theoric, uh, economic theories like the institu new institutional theory, which states that uh, the organizational performance is a result of external factors and uh, really beyond the direct control of uh, the CEO. But here we prove that uh, the bank performance may depend on, uh, on internal factors like the CEO control and uh, the delegation of decision-making authority. Uh, the main limitation of this work is uh, the data source because we have used a research questionnaire uh, unload, acknowledging potential biases. Also, the short uh, time frame of only five years. Um, also, the study is limited on uh, the Tunisian context and also is limited to the banking system. What I recommend for the future research is uh, why not to test the global application, so the general, general, uh, to generalize this uh, a study across diverse global banking sectors for comprehensive insights. Also, uh, to extend the time frame, uh, use an, uh, a longer period or uh, maybe a uh, uh, longer number of banks, higher number of banks. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, you hear thank me? you very much, uh, Zaidi, for uh, your uh, great presentation and thank you for enlightening about uh, uh, <clears throat> your research uh, and um, let me say also to give uh, uh, an interesting understanding about uh, the characteristics and banks' performance uh, mm -hmm. Tunisia situation, Tunisia uh, banks, uh, uh, bank environments. Mm -hmm. um, I have some uh, obviously reflection for you, uh, mm -hmm. but before I will, uh, I would like to ask you to uh, Azaz Boras Tour and Umar Ahmed. Uh, you are uh, you join this uh, this parallel session. So if you have any uh, suggestions, or consideration for uh, Zaidi, please uh, absolutely turn uh, turn on your microphone, your video, and uh, uh, we can discuss uh, about uh, without any problems. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions uh, or uh, reflections about this?
Yes, okay. it's great. Uh, yes, okay. uh, for you. Thank you, Azaz. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, quite uh, interesting for me, you know, like, like actually, you know, like, uh, like you said that uh, Indonesia, which we, uh, we know that is a Muslim country, but Islamic uh, finance is represent about, I think, 13%, right? You mentioned, yeah, of the total market, right? So, so mm -hmm. what, what, what do you think, you know, like, why it is not, uh, it should be more than 50%, you know, but, but why it's just 13%, yeah, you know, and I, I want to know your opinion. Yeah. Okay, with the pleasure. Uh, the Islamic finance in Tunisia is really new. The first Islamic bank uh, is the Zituna Bank, and it's established uh, on uh, 2009. Uh, given the short period uh, of uh, the Islamic finance in general and um, the banking finance, uh, finding, uh, Islamic banking, uh, particularly, it's a very good result because uh, given the short period, they really excel and uh, they did, uh, they have uh, an important um, market share with 25% of customers. It's a good result if you see the short period of the Islamic banking in Tunisia. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah, you know, because like in Tunisia, right, you know, after Arab Spring, right, you know, you have a political crisis, you know, is it affect the growth of Islamic finance, you know, in your country and, and in, in what extent, you know, if you could share? Uh, the economic crisis affect more the conventional banks and the other uh, institutions because the uh, Zituna Bank, uh, because it's the biggest and the largest bank in Tunisia, continue to uh, progress. It is of the Zituna, uh, an award as the best bank uh, in uh, Africa uh, last year. So, um, uh, how can I say? Uh, given that, uh, even that, uh, if there is uh, an economic crisis, the Islamic um, banking uh, prove they that uh, they can resist and they prove uh, and they realize an important results so the economic crisis doesn't really affect the uh, islamic uh, finance in tunisia uh, i'm sorry i can't hear you again i don't know it's the problem on yeah i just want to say thank you very much for your answer thank you very much okay, thank, you. thank you yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, Thank over you. to you, uh, Mr. David. Thank you so much uh, for your considerations and reflections for Zaidi. Uh, mm -hmm. My consideration uh, is that uh, uh, to finalize the publication for uh, within the European uh, Journal of Islamic Finance, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion is to strengthen much more the uh, theoretical and practical implications at the end okay. of your paper, because we read it uh, thoughtfully. Uh, I think that you use uh, a proper uh, theoretical framework because uh, the, you extract uh, uh, your data and obviously based on your quantitative study, uh, everything is based on uh, uh, a theoretical approach. So that's, uh, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can suggest is uh, to uh, stress uh, much more better the, the links between uh, your results, your empirical results based on your quantitative study uh, with the, the theoretical framework that you use uh, and explain much more better in mm -hmm. the discussion section. Okay. And also, um, by, let me say, finalize a little bit better also practical implications. So what uh, uh, governments may do, what a CEO may do, uh, mm -hmm. considering obviously uh, the topic that you deal uh, in your research question and obviously uh, considering, uh, let me say, also the implications uh, in terms of uh, education, because uh, you stressing this, uh, obviously, this theme, and I think that's perfect. And mm -hmm. also considering the uh, reflection of us as uh, of the uh, of the movement uh, of the government movement uh, in Tunisia, I think that would be interesting. So that's my suggestion. Obviously, after this conference, uh, for you also for us as uh, you can uh, then submit your paper. Uh, mm -hmm. in the European Journal of Islamic Finance, and then we uh, we try to have a fast uh, double peer review process uh, in order to uh, give you some uh, feedback 
uh, mm -hmm. at least uh, about the two external reviewers for your paper. So thank you so much, okay. Zadie, for your Thank you very much. I really appreciate your feedback and um, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So Azaz, that's uh, your turn. So uh, we have uh, a new paper in this, um, this part of the session number one. So we have the opportunity to um, to include and to listen now the presentation by uh, Azaz Bora Borazdur, hoping that right. uh, I spell in a good way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper yeah. Is... <laughs> Wait, can, can I share my, my screen? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, the paper is the 1.4, Driving Sustainable Innovation, Islamic Financial Literacy and Inclusion in the Five Southernmost Province of Thailand. So that's, uh, I think, an interesting case study by your side. Okay, Azaz, the virtual okay. floor is uh, all okay. for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me try to share my screen. Is, uh, can you see my slide That's now? That's great. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, good day to all of you and uh, big thanks to you, uh, Professor David, you know, for hosting the TIEF, uh, uh, which is <coughs> splendid event today. And my name is uh, Asas Morasud, you know, and today uh, I would like to take this uh, opportunity to describe and illustrate my paper, which is uh, Driving Sustainable Innovation, Islamic Financial Literacy and Inclusion in the Five Southernmost Provinces of Thailand. The pursuit of uh, financial literacy and uh, financial inclusion are uh, widely recognized as a critical objective in Thailand development agenda. However, as you can see in the screen, the OECD uh, survey, survey uh, showed that the level of uh, financial literacy in Thailand is uh, lower than the global average. Despite this, uh, the Bank of Thailand survey indicates a sharp increase in the rate of uh, financial usage in Thailand. This suggests that uh, many financial customers in Thailand uh, may not be financially literate. However, the, the survey that I have mentioned just now does not uh, reflect the Muslim population, and uh, and the, the I mean the, the instrument also does not include the principle of Islamic finance. So uh, to promote financial literacy and, and inclusion among all segments of the population in Thailand. It is uh, crucial to assess how Thai Muslims understand and uh, utilize Islamic finance. So, uh, for your information, in Thailand we have about 5% uh, of the Muslim population. Yeah. So, Muslim is like a minority uh, in this country. And now I want to talk about the uh, yeah. Now I want to talk about the five southernmost provinces of Thailand, which is uh, my uh, research area. <coughs> So uh, this area is, uh, has been uh, suffering from the movement of uh, separatists, you know, it has the problem with uh, regional dispute and most of the population in this area are Thai Malay Muslim and uh, due to the regional dispute, it has a lot of uh, impact on the economic. Then uh, when we look at, in the, at the big picture in the Southeast Asia, uh, this region is uh, connected with Malaysia and is uh, not far from Indonesia. And in 1993, the government has a cooperation project called Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand Growth Triangle uh, to boost, uh, which established to boost economic activity in the cooperating country. And as uh, based on the policy uh, in Patani province, the government plan to uh, promote halal food industrial estate, while in Situn and Yala, the government aim to boost the tourist destination. And in Naratiwat and Songkha province, the government uh, aim to uh, promote the cross-border trading between Thailand and the ne neighboring country. So as you can see uh, from all this policy, it's highly related to the uh, financial activity. Even that uh, this area is a Muslim majority uh, area, so Islamic finance could come and play a significant role in uh, facilitating all the policy. <clears throat> okay. And uh, after conducting the, uh, sorry, I think this could be. Yeah, after uh, conducting the literature review, it was found that uh, many researchers in the field 
have a defined Islamic financial literacy by uh, maintaining the close relationship with the conventional definition, which is uh, the involve a combination of knowledge, uh, attitude, and uh, behavior in making a financial decision and manage financial resources. The major difference is that the main pillar of Islamic financial literacy are derived from the Sharia principle. And according to the literature, Islamic financial literacy consists of a four dimension, which are the understanding of Sharia and non-Sharia compliant earnings, uh, charity in Islam, Islamic money management, and Islamic financial product and services. Uh, as for the financial inclusion, it refers to the process of promoting access to and uh, broadening the usage of Islamic financial product and services. Furthermore, based on the literature review, the study of financial inclusion is highly uh, concerned with the barrier that could prevent individuals from being included in the financial system. As you can see from the slide, uh, there are Sorry, as you can see from the slide, there are two types of the barrier. First is the voluntary, which uh, include factors like re religious reasons, lack of trust and lack of fund. And why involuntary factor is mainly concerned about eligibility, affordability, and the physical distance. As, as, as such, you know, uh, Islamic financial literacy and Islamic financial inclusion are integral to sustainable finance as they empower individuals with knowledge and access to services that could foster a more inclusive and sustainable financial system. So based on the research method, uh, this, uh, this is research utilizes a mixed method in an attempt to integrate quantitative and qualitative data to create a comprehensive and rich picture. Under this design, uh, the priority model, hello? Can you hear me? Uh, no. Yes, we hear you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, we hear yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mother opened the microphone, so that's why uh, you have. Oh, a sorry, yeah, because, I, yeah. because I, 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 cannot see you. You know, I only can see the slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, problem. Okay, you can yeah, proceed okay. without any problem. Okay, sorry for. Uh, yeah. So under this design, you know, I, I decided to prioritize the quantitative as it allowed me to obtain initial and reliable results, which can then be elaborated further with the qualitative details. And the quantitative data was collected by using the close-ended questionnaire, which was uh, completed by 500 respondents who were Muslim and reside in the area. And uh, the questionnaire data were then analyzed uh, by using descriptive statistics. This technique was chosen to describe the characteristic of the data and to interpret the level of Islamic financial literacy and inclusion. Why the qualitative data was collected by using a semi-structured interview with 13 participants who work in Islamic financial related organization in the area. To, to analyze the interview data, thematic analysis was employed to classify themes that are interesting and uh, important which were then used uh, this team to address the research questions. Yeah, so uh, this slide, I will talk about the results of uh, my uh, study. So I would like to begin by the uh, level of Islamic financial literacy and inclusion. So uh, the level of Islamic financial literacy was calculated by combining the score of Islamic financial knowledge, attitude and behavior the study found that the mean score of the sample was 50.48%, uh, indicating that the level was just above the average. So when looking at it in the detail, it was observed that only the score of Islamic financial knowledge was below the average. And it was found that most of the respondents were unable to answer the question related to Islamic financial terms, Islamic financial products, and they have lack of uh, numerical skills. So as for the, so this finding is uh, consistent with the response of uh, many uh, informants who observe that local Muslims have a proper understanding of what is prohibited and the meaning of charity in Islam. But uh, however, when it comes to Islamic finance, most of them were unaware. And as for the level of Islamic financial inclusion, the data revealed that the mean score was equal to 18.4% 
indicating that access and uses of Islamic financial products and services across the sample was a very low. Uh, this trend is also in line with the interview data, which point out that the number of Muslim uh, clients in Islamic financial institutions is much lower than in the conventional banks. And uh, regarding the uh, barrier to Islamic financial inclusion, uh, the, data, the table show that uh, both uh, respondent and the interviewee uh, recognize that economic condition like low income and high prices are the most uh, significant barrier. Meanwhile, they also cited a lack of trust and uh, lack of documentation as a major obstacle. Uh, apart from this, uh, only respondent expressed concern about physical distance, while interviewee recognized the slow credit approval process as another main barrier to assess Islamic finance. And uh, uh, furthermore, based on the cross-sectional analysis, it was found that uh, those with low income, uh, small and medium enterprise, SMEs, and uh, agriculturists were the most vulnerable groups in terms of Islamic financial illiteracy and exclusion. And in this slide, I will talk about obstacles that have limited the growth of Islamic financial literacy and Islamic financial inclusion in the area. Uh, regarding Islamic financial literacy, uh, firstly, there is a lack of Islamic finance syllabus in the current uh, cur curriculum which has caused the general population to lack basic Islamic finance knowledge. And uh, sorry. Yeah, and uh, secondly, uh, many employees in Islamic financial institution lack the expertise to explain and differentiate between Islamic and conventional financial product. And thirdly, most religious uh, leaders in the area, which are, I refer to the local imam, uh, they are unfamiliar with the principle and practice of Islamic finance, which create a barrier to the dissemination of Islamic financial knowledge to the public. And finally, there is a scarcity of Islamic finance teacher within the Islamic educational system in the area. And uh, on the other hand, uh, for financial Islamic financial inclusion, as I mentioned before, the main obstacle in the region is uh, associated with the economic condition. Specifically, a significant uh, of the portion of population were poor and they have a lack of collateral to secure their loan. And another main barrier for using Islamic financial product is the high prices, which can increase the burden on borrowers as well as create financial difficulty for them. Uh, furthermore, problem with the supply side, uh, such as a slow process and distrust, which then form a bad debt incident and weak governance in Islamic financial institution, uh, also another main barrier that limit the usage of Islamic finance in the area. And uh, finally, the lack of an online services channel is also an obstacle, especially for the young and middle-aged individual who often demand uh, con convenient financial services. And uh, <clears throat> based on the empirical evidence, uh, Proactive recommendation to increase the level of Islamic financial literacy in the area are proposed as follows. Uh, first, it is necessary to uh, develop Islamic finance uh, curriculum and uh, learning material for every stage of Islamic educational system. And second is to provide uh, intensive Islamic finance courses to employee in Islamic financial institution in order to enable them to educate customer and also to the religious leaders to enable them to promote a correct understanding of Islamic finance to the public and also to the teacher in Islamic school to enable them to impart Islamic financial knowledge to their students. As for the, uh, in order to increase the level of Islamic financial inclusion, it, yes, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, uh, and lastly, to, to increase the, the level of Islamic financial literacy, is to hold seminar uh, at increasing uh, public awareness of the significance of Islamic finance across the region. And meanwhile, to overcome the obstacle about Islamic financial inclusion, the government uh, should support the industry. And based on the finding, they can do so through uh, tax authority, regulatory reform, and also through the fiscal policies. Then Islamic financial institution could utilize a marketing strategy like push and pull or online and offline to promote their uh, existing Islamic financial product and services. And also they could 
uh, innovate Islamic financial product that are suitable for the market. Yeah, this could be Islamic venture capital for SMEs and Islamic microfinance for the poor. And finally, is to uh, establish uh, Sharia advisory council, you know, in the national body. Yeah, in order for them to uh, issue the ruling on Islamic financial transaction in the country, as this would help to increase the public trust on Islamic financial institution. And this is the last slide. Uh, this slide, uh, I will talk about how this research has uh, contributed to the knowledge in the field of study. So it can be viewed from the three perspectives. Uh, firstly, uh, on the contextual fact, uh, perspective, uh, this study has collected a wealth of information, provide empirical evidence, and uh, highlight obstacle and proposed strategy uh, for Islamic financial literacy and Islamic financial inclusion in the Islamic financial industry uh, of Thailand. And uh, sorry. And uh, theoretically, <laughs> This, uh, this study has developed a new conceptual framework to defy and examine Islamic financial literacy. And uh, finally, from the methodology uh, perspective, uh, this study uh, rep represents an initial attempt to employ mixed method as a tool to investigate Islamic financial literacy and inclusion in order to uh, increase the depth and breadth of the research area. And now I would like to uh, conclude my presentation and uh, express my gratitude for your attention and uh, thank you very much thank you so much uh, as for your uh, presentation and for presenting uh, uh, this paper uh, enlightening let me say the, the concept of sustainable uh, uh, innovation also uh, within the Islamic finance field and providing also the experience of Thailand in, uh, in your paper um, as uh, before, I would like to ask if uh, Zaidi, Umar, do you have any uh, questions or suggestions uh, about uh, uh, the presentation of uh, Azaz and obviously tips uh, to boost uh, this, uh, this piece of research? anything okay so i can uh, i can share with you uh, as some uh, some reflections about your paper also in line of uh, uh, your uh, future uh, presentation uh, so what i can uh, uh, what i i appreciate is the originality of uh, your work uh, that's important also because uh, you for the journal, uh, you gave the idea about uh, an important case study as Thailand, also on the uh, framework that uh, that you present and you share with us. Uh, obviously, in terms of uh, journals, so you can submit your paper, but for sure, probably a uh, typical reviewer may suggest you to first stress a little bit better your introduction. So, for instance, uh, what I can suggest uh, also reading uh, is that uh, that's okay. You give a great background of uh, your paper. Then you can uh, uh, put some uh, highlights about uh, the methodological framework that you use uh, in the paper. Uh, and then uh, you should also summarize a little bit uh, the results, just a paragraph that you obtain with your paper and also the uh, implications that you get uh, in terms of uh, um, we say uh, theory and also in terms of practice and also at the end uh, putting uh, a, a, a part a little part uh, uh, in which you sum uh, the paper you in which you uh, declare the map of the paper so just to say the next section uh, next section readers may find the literature review etc uh, about the literature review i i have no no, no comments uh, for you obviously you can then wait uh, the uh, reviewing process. Uh, uh, my main uh, suggestion is to stress more and more and more uh, the methodology. Uh, how to do what I can suggest is to read the previous published paper within the European Journal of Islamic Finance and also in uh, other 
journals uh, because you declare a mixed methodology so you use a quantitative and also qualitative uh, results so you, what i can suggest is to give more and more details about uh, your semi-structured interview so what are the questions uh, also link the the, um, the topics to link the variables that you stress in your interviews uh, uh, with uh, the theoretical framework uh, with uh, the theory let me say so that's what uh, um, i i want to suggest to you um, <clears throat> obviously you obtain i think uh, a good uh, pool so more than 50 uh, than 500 questionnaires uh, that's uh, i think uh, uh, a great uh, number also for this uh, last but not least in the methodology uh, you can uh, uh, stress a little bit and write a little bit more about uh, the um, the general case study so the background uh, uh, the situation that you have uh, in uh, in your country uh, and also in the provinces in the five provinces uh, that you that you use the results are interesting, in my opinion. They are well drafted and well developed. Um, just a suggestion, in my view, if you uh, if you want, you can put uh, on brackets uh, some uh, extract of your interviews, just to uh, reflect more and give more emphasis on what you uh, are describing, as you do, for instance, on page uh, number ten. You can do also uh, something a little bit more in the other parts. Uh, the also discussion is interesting. Uh, uh, what I can suggest is to cite more uh, references, also more Scopus references, uh, and link uh, your results with the previous uh, results that uh, your uh, our colleagues uh, uh, declare in the past. Um, I think that the conclusion will be interesting and also well written. So that's uh, my point of view and my personal suggestions for your paper. And I hope, obviously, uh, all you all the best uh, in uh, continuously uh, the publication process of uh, of this article. Thank you for being there. Thank you very much for your feedback, uh, Professor David. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, so I think that we finish the parallel session number one because the first uh, author uh, uh, not connected probably for uh, several for several reasons. So uh, it's my pleasure to hosting all of you there and uh, good luck for your uh, research and good luck for everything. I would like to remind to remind that uh, at the three p.m. Italian time at this link I post the link on chat. You can uh, uh, follow the presentation of Professor Kabir Hassan. Uh, my suggestion is to follow because uh, he is the, the most important scholar in the world for Islamic finance. And uh, he will give uh, a keynote speech about the state of the art of Islamic finance within the European countries. And then uh, we have uh, a fast closing session. So please uh, follow us also at uh, 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, Italian time, uh, um, you you will find the link uh, directly at the website that I post there. Okay, thank you and bye bye. Have a nice day.